Well, that was disappointing. Wheel of Time season one was not exactly what I wanted. And if you're wondering why the hell I'm out in the snow and why this review is so late, well, those two reasons are kind of correlated. Kind of got hit with five feet or so of snow and that's why this is happening now instead of about a week ago. I kind of ran out of power and internet so I'm gonna just throw this together while I'm in the snowstorm and then go upload it at the gym. But I would like to say thank you for hitting a thousand subscribers on this channel. It actually means a lot. In all seriousness, I'm so happy that a thousand of you decided to support me and I've gotta be honest, there probably won't be that much Wheel of Time content coming in the future, but I will have a lot of more video essay type style stuff and things that anybody could watch and I hope it will be interesting and you will stick around. If you are new to this video, subscribe. I think I'll post some interesting stuff that you'll like. Since I'm currently in the middle of a snowstorm, there won't be any fancy editing, there won't be any clips in this video, so just look at my pretty face, my nice hat, and let's get going. But as I was saying, Wheel of Time season one was not exactly the best adaptation as a whole. There were a lot of disappointing elements and I know due to COVID, it did not turn out the way the creators really wanted either. That was much apparent, especially in the final episodes. But I have to rate it on what they put out and I was not very impressed. I already recorded this review once in the comforts of my own home, but I just found I just ragged on small details throughout the season. And I wanted to make another one that touched on the broad issues the show had as a whole instead of just going on about oh they screwed up this and they screwed up this and they screwed up this I want to help them try to make a better next season because I still think there is a possibility for this to be good and as I've stated before I think this is the only shot that we got of a high budget wheel of time adaptation at least before we die from climate change I know that sounds quite ironic as I sit in a bank of snow but moving on I want to talk about the style of the show I know a lot of people thought this was just going to be a Game of Thrones knockoff and it doesn't feel like Game of Thrones but that's not necessarily a good thing. It doesn't really have its own persona. It feels very generic and lackluster in the way that was shot, the way that it was edited, especially editing, and the way it was put together as a whole. Now, this may be because it was rushed, but I'm judging the final project, as I said, and it didn't really have an identity itself. It felt like just a blah TV show overall, and not like this is the next thing. The way it shot is so important to really engage the viewers, and there was not a whole lot of engaging stuff besides maybe the Aiel fight. Overall, it was just a lot of back and forth shots between characters and some creative ones in Tarvalin. But overall, I was not super impressed with the cinematography or the editing, and I really wanted more. The soundtrack, though, was terrible. It was so lackluster. That's what makes a lot of these emotional moments. Imagine the Rand moment in the end. Even though the editing was bad and the storytelling was a little bit funky, if it had some epic music, you would have been tricked to going along with it. And I think I could forgive a lot of the missed beats if there was a better soundtrack to make me more emotionally invested in it. So my main point when it comes to production and putting it together as a final product would be to give it its own identity. Wheel of Time is a very in-depth series and the way that it builds it world and you can really exemplify that on screen and the little details in the background will make this pop and you got to do that in the cinematography too by showing off the aspects of the world that are so impressive it just felt very bare bones and they were just focusing on weird stuff at times and I hope for a major improvement in season two if they get more time to film because I wanted more pizzazz I wanted the show to pop off the screen and I did not feel like it did now the biggest problems with the show were definitely the storytelling and character work and those kind of go hand in hand and I think they had it relatively on track with the first three episodes and dropping those all at once was a good decision yeah I had some nitpicks here and there but overall I think it was where it needed to be in terms of storytelling and in an adaptation they're not supposed to do everything exact because it's essentially impossible to put it on screen in such a perfect way and I did not expect them to do that but the changes they made were a lot of just unnecessary stuff whether it's a little detail here in the naming of something or a huge detail in how the power works and how people draw upon it. There is stuff that they're just changing that makes little to no sense in terms of an adaptation. Like this is not something that makes it hard to put on screen. So why are you changing it? It's not so complex that people can't understand it in a little blurb from a character. So why is it getting changed? And that's probably my biggest issue were just random changes that did not work in the show and also will not work in the future 
This is a massive series, as you all know, and taking out bits of the foundation makes the series collapse further on. You're essentially creating more problems for yourself in the future. The changing of the actual story was also a big issue. Now, I know with the COVID restrictions and the Matt actor leaving, that made it really hard on them, but they tried to stick to a massive scale ending and it did not work at all. Even in the middle bits, the Warder plotline, I like the episode in concept and in execution, but it does not belong in the first season, especially if you only have eight episodes. I know you asked for 10, but tough shit, you got eight. So work with what you have and remove that and put in the character work that would have gone there. There's a one month later and you can clearly see that's where those two episodes would have gone if they'd gotten them. That was an awkward skip and didn't really work in the way that you were portraying things. And the Warder plotline does not add much to the overall development of these characters. And a season one needs to get you attached to these people. So new viewers come in and they're like, yes, I want to see more of this. I want these people to be displayed on screen for many years to come. But that really didn't work in this adaptation as they did not devote enough time to these characters. These main characters, yeah, there's a bunch of time to do it in the future, but this is where you're supposed to give the first impressions, how they think through situations, how they will react to certain things. These characters you're going to be with for a long time, so you want to develop their baseline so that when you change it in the future, it actually has a significant impact. That's probably my biggest grievance, even over the plot changes, is that the characters were not given any time at all. I love these characters and I'm a character based reader and when I watched this show and didn't really get a huge emotional connection to them, I'm worried that people who haven't read 15 books of this series will have zero connection to them and essentially not care about them in the future when their plot lines become more epic and they need this emotional investment so that the moments hit right. That's my biggest flaw with this season is the lack of character development and essentially time overall devoted to these people. I'm totally fine with giving Moraine bigger spotlight in this first season, but you did nothing of interest with it. If you're gonna give more time to this world, don't focus on the politicking of the Aes Sedai, which we have plenty of in the future. Focus on the world building and expanding this massive world and showing what's so special about Wheel of Time. That's my biggest disappointment is they had two options to focus on this first season and they chose a third that doesn't really make any sense. Now this is no criticism to the actors. For the most part I was completely fine with the casting and performances. I thought everybody did pretty good. There was some clunky dialogue here or there and there were some side characters that didn't really give it their all but overall I thought everybody embodied the characters really well and there were moments where I'm like that is Rand, that is Perrin, that is Egwene, that is Nynaeve. I like these guys on screen and I think they work well and their chemistry is great when they get those scenes together. That's that's the problem of they're not getting those scenes together. And I really hope in the second season they step up their character work game, get back on track with the plot, and only make the necessary changes. And I think they'll be able to do this. Because at the end of the day, the story is based on these characters and the events that happen that you're changing happen because of these characters. And if you remove those events, you remove the character moments and vice versa. So if you're writing new plot lines or trying to speed things up, you need to be very careful in what you do because you're affecting the development of these people and that affects more storylines and more events later on. That's why I'm kind of worried with the major changes in this adaptation because you're affecting so much later on and it's like a Jenga tower and it could all fall over at any moment if you make one too many mistakes. But that is not to say I have all negatives about this season. As I talked about the character interactions when we got them, were good. Cinematic shots and sequences when we got them were also good. The Aiel fight, there was some cinematic stuff in the first three episodes, especially the way that Tarvalin and Shadar Logoth looked. Those were great. But then again, it's not permeating the rest of the series. It seems that they have these few moments in mind and then slacking off for the rest of it. And I need that to be constant. If you want this to be a lasting memory and to be renewed for further on seasons, Past, I think it's renewed for season three, then you need to make this have a bigger impact than just a first season wow new TV to watch. You need to make this last in audiences minds. I also thought the way that channeling looked was a good basis for what's to come. If when the girls go to the tower they learn to see the colors and that kind of expands the world of channeling and the way the taint and corruption looked for the men was good but what I had the problem with is how they changed the world building and especially some of these hand gestures those did not work so well. Let's 
keep it simple and utilitarian and add the flair into the actual CGI weave. Speaking of CGI, those final troll walks in that last episode were not good. Yes, I know COVID, you couldn't get the actors in, but reduce the scale. You already majorly rewrote the Perrin Matt thing, especially. That was bad. Perrin did nothing. But what you need to do is make the scale smaller, make it more personal, so then you can use what you have to make it look good. Look at Game of Thrones season one. Everything was reused sets and smaller with a much smaller budget, and it worked because they were smart with what they had. I hate comparing it to Game of Thrones, but it's the premier example of an adaptation into television form. I really do hope these creators look at these reviews and take this criticism in mind, because there is a lot of potential between the actors, between the budget, between what you've already established. Yeah, this first season wasn't very good overall, but there is potential to be great in the future. Stumbling out of the gates does not mean you're screwed for the whole race. You just got to come back harder and smarter and learn from your mistakes. Learn how to make this series Wheel of Time, not some separate adaptation. You make the necessary changes, but you don't change the unnecessary stuff. Yes, it's a new turn into the wheel, but that does not excuse you to change the story just because you feel like it. I thought I gave my thoughts on the final episodes pretty well, so I won't touch on that too much, but the fumbling of the ending is a really big deal for me and brings my score down significantly because you need to wrap things up nicely. You need to make this a nice tight package for season one. It's very different than other seasons where you can leave a cliffhanger or some loose ends because you know you're getting more. But for a season one, people need to see this is a product that they can invest their time into and be excited for in the future. And the parent thing with Pat on Fane was just bad. Rand getting his moment taken by the girls, I was fine with, except the girls should not succeed this easily. What motivation do they have for next season? They needed to do what I said in my episode 8 review or something along those lines. And the Rand Dark One fight, I know all of you are talking about Dark One, quotation marks. Book readers, you know. And so that was just very anticlimactic. And as Daniel Green talked about in his review, the editing was just terrible. And overall, I just wish they'd taken more time to really focus in on these character moments when they had those COVID protocols. Change it into a more personal stakes type of thing, especially with the ending of Eye of the World being so controversial. You can really change it up as much as you want. And you didn't change it enough and you changed it too much to make it this weird amalgamation of pretty much blood. Overall, I was pretty disappointed with Wheel of Time Season 1, but I think there is potential for the future. I think it can get better, so please keep on supporting the show, but making your criticism heard to the creators. Don't harass anybody. We're not here to do that. You should never harass actors or producers, except for D&D. Fuck those guys. I'm just kidding, but my final score is a 5 out of 10. I want to go harsher and go 4, but I know that's my book reader inside of me, and I know a lot of people that have not read the books enjoyed this show, and I have to take that into account. So I'm going to give it a 5 out of 10. It is an average to slightly below average show with room for lots of improvement in this world. Thanks, guys. My toes are freezing off. Like and subscribe if you enjoy this video. And I'm out.